Well, hello, my friends. Happy Sunday to you. And look at this cutie patootie that we're making today. Um, I am starting off with an 11 by 17 uh, MDF board. And I've got a selection of vintage papers that I've got out here. And I'm just covering the back with all of my papers. Put them all down with matte medium. Now I am doing a uh, technique that I love that is going to be available. I'm going to show you in the new uh, workshop coming up. Um, but it is a pressed paper technique that I love because it provides texture. I'm using um, parchment paper and gesso. It provides texture while softly pushing back the background. I want the background to go neutral, but I don't want to lose all of those wonderful vintage papers. So it's a great way to achieve many things. And so I love using this technique. I'm continuing building that background with layers with my brayer and softly muting that down so that it is ready for the focal point. I'm using all kinds of paint today. Um, I'm using fluid acrylics, house paints that you, the samples that you get at Home Depot. I'm using heavy or medium body paints. I'm, I'm using a little bit of everything. I'm just pulling all, out everything um, to just kind of get a grungy, rustic, scratchy feel. Now I'm starting to define the spaces, um, creating some separation from the top of the piece to the bottom of the piece. Again, still using that technique. Um, it leaves such a really great scratchy feel. And I have just mixed paint. I couldn't even begin to tell you what's what. I just started mixing until I found the right color. <laughs> Um, and then using some gray here now to kind of mute it even more and bring it more neutral. Now I'm using just a uh, sketch and wash pencil and sketching out the beginnings of my focal point and um, trying to make sure that's kind of centered. I never use a, a ruler, which I probably should, <laughs> but I usually just try to eyeball it, but it wasn't, I was like, something doesn't seem right. So I resketched that a couple of times to get the uh, shape and size that I wanted. Now I'm just using some palette knife work and gesso to again continue that rustic feel um, and just kind of block in my wooden box. That's the look I was going for here that's going to hold all of my wonderful flowers. So now I'm using, this is my Garden 2 stencil, and I love using stencils as a guide. Um, I also love using stencils to create the background. They're not the focal point, they're just there. And it is a great way to quickly and easily fill in space. Um, they, you'll see them 
but they're not the focal point and I love being able to use my stencils because it doesn't take a lot of work um, you can add to them um, you can add um, aging sh um, shading which we will um, some additional palette knife work which we will to really create um, instead of a stenciled look something more hand done um, but you don't have to go through all of the the work it takes to paint all of those leaves. So I love using my stencils for that. So again, these flowers, this is the Magnolia stencil, and I know that these are still background and so I'm just filling in the space um, with the, the stencil pattern. Again, knowing that these are not going to be focal point and it is super easy to create that way. Again, these are, these are also background and then I'm gonna use it as a guide for my focal point, which is I always say use your stencils as a guide um, so I kind of get an idea of okay yeah this looks great without going through the work of actually creating the flower and then not liking it so I get a base and it helps give me richness and thickness with my stencils as my guide And now we're just gonna do some finger painting. Um, finger painting flowers is just fun and easy, and I love the look. It lends itself to that kind of rustic feel. And um, the key to is mixing, mixing, mixing your colors. That's the key to the great, to great flowers. I'm just going to continue to add a few little highlights here and there and then darken the centers. And that's how simple and easy it is. I come back in with my palette knife and go over some of the stenciled areas. So again, it gives it that painterly look and not necessarily a stenciled look. Super easy. Now I'm adding some um, more rustic look with my palette knife and adding contrast. Contrast is key to any successful piece. And I'm just coming back in and doing some line work with my palette knife. Um, I will accentuate that with some shading, but um, that black really adds some oomph and some pop. And um, if, in, if you've seen me do anything, I always talk about um, simplify, simplifying with white and black and really kind of bringing a piece together. And that's what I'm doing. And so now I'm just adding the magic, the shading that really, because right now the flowers are almost blending right in with the background um, and so again contrast so I'm adding contrast with shading to really bring those flowers away from the background so that they are part of that focal point I am using a just a general it's it, the name of it is a general's brand charcoal pencil Super simple, super easy project. Using your stencils as your guide and using some fun techniques that will be, I will be showing you in the new, and it's the new workshop is called Yummy Layered Backgrounds. I love that title. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's um, process and that you give it a try. And if you do, send me some pictures. I'd love to see it. 
Um, stick around for the story that inspired this piece. It was a truly beautiful story. Um, just adding some dots and some additional notes of maybe flowers. I did put my words down. I printed my words out and just put them down with matte medium. I forgot to turn the camera on for that. Adding my signature shading around the edge and that is it my friends. Um, I hope you enjoyed the project and um, that you enjoy the story that follows that inspired this piece. Have a wonderful Sunday. cute my friends happy Sunday to you I just am so happy the feeling of this feels so good it's just like grungy and scratchy and good and that is what I wanted so I shared my process throughout the video and um, I just love how she turned out and so the inspiration behind this piece came through an email this last week and I get emails all the time and I am I just want to say how thankful I am that um, I inspire you and that I can encourage you and this this email that came had this gal shared that she was just really struggling um, in a lot of different areas and she said but what I learned from you which is really humbling I and I just share what has been given to me and she said I just try to find one thing to be grateful for Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. Um, she said, I just try to find one thing to be grateful for. And she said, and I make it my practice. And, I, and she said, I've heard you talk about practicing gratitude. And she goes, it really does help. Um, it helps me find hope in the day. And so um, this is hope. This is gratitude is the right attitude. Um, I don't know where you guys are at and we all have our seasons where life is easy and it's smooth and things are okay and then we have seasons and I've, I have all of the seasons um, in my life so far and right now things are okay but that's not to say other seasons will not come and I say this a lot but even though the times may be difficult and there might be struggles and it could be small or it could be big and everybody's struggle is different but it's also very real and um, no one's struggle is diminished by another they're all the same it's all hard no matter what you're dealing with and I just want to say that finding one thing to be grateful for brings one tiny ray of light it scratches at that surface of of darkness it scratches at the surface of struggle it scratches at the surface of our hurt and our brokenness and it and it provides healing I we there's a process of healing and there's a process of mending and going through our struggles we all have to go through that and sometimes it's not very pretty but if there's one thing that we can be grateful for in the day and it can be as simple as I got out of bed today hallelujah I've had those days. I've written in my journals that I got out of my pajamas. Um, that was that was a triumph for the day. And whatever it is for you in your situation, find one thing to be grateful for. One thing to have a small, tiny celebration over. Because again, it scratches at that surface of the brokenness and it begins the healing process journal my friends create it helps in our gratitude process and I I'm so grateful for this community and I'm so grateful for the lives that share their story with me every week I'm just blessed and I am thankful that I can inspire you by a few words that I say or by some art that I create and I hope that um, if you are ever in a place where you feel that it is hopeless, that there you are not alone, that there are people 
to help you, that there are counselors to talk to, and that's not a sign of weakness, that's a sign of strength to get help and take care of yourself and take care of um, the healing process. Um, always, always please reach out if there is ever a time where you don't find that hope and you can't find one thing to be grateful for. All right, loves, Whew, I, I got a little bit choked up. I'm just so thankful for this community and for the women that reach out to me. And I am honored and grateful that I can inspire and encourage. And um, that's what Sunday Inspiration is for. So my loves, I hope your Sunday um, is filled with gratitude, even if it's just one thing. And I hope that it is restful and that you take care of yourself and your soul and um, love, love, love on yourself. And I hope that your Sunday is restful and that I hope that you always, always know that you are loved.